one sat alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows then jesus came and bade his darkness flee It's time to open the Word once again with evangelist Lester Roloff on the Family Altar Program. Glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Now then you have your Bible. Turn with us to the first book of the Bible. First book of the Bible. And we're going to start uh, with the book of Genesis. Today, I'm speaking on the subject uh, that reminds us uh, of the what we eat and what we're not to eat over in the book of 1 Corinthians 10.31. You can mark that one. You ought to memorize it. Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And that'll take care of every bit of it. Brother Olaf said, somebody said, Brother Olaf is always against. I'm for everything that God's for. I'm for everything that's good for you. I'd never take anything good away from any of God's children. All right, Genesis. And uh, we'll read chapter 1. Now, do you believe that man has changed? In it? Do you believe that he was, his appetite ought to be in a different? Do you believe that God's word has changed? Do you believe God has changed? Do you believe that uh, what man ate in the beginning ought to be eaten now? Do you believe if God kept people well marching through the wilderness because they ate the right thing? And so far as we know now, the people of Israel walked, which means they got a little good exercise. They weren't riding in air-conditioned cars or airplanes. Now, these people were kept well by what they ate and the way they walked and exercised. Now, I may not get to it today, but I will come to it in the teaching time. Walking is God's exercise. That's Bible exercise. Walking is the greatest exercise there is. Now, you see this big fellow with all these big muscles and look like he's muscle bound, you know, and he is. I mean, that's not real. I mean, that's not real physical health. You don't overdevelop your body. You don't try to make a horse out of yourself. You're not trying to build an elephant into you. Walking is the best exercise you'll ever get. And the average person wouldn't walk hardly to the garage and back. Girls, walking will keep your body in shape. It'll keep the organs in your body operating like they ought to operate. People begin to get out of shape just because they get up to 30 or 35 or 40. And then their famous excuse is, I guess I'm getting old. Or, I've been a little ailing and it must have been something I ate. Yeah, more than likely it was. Now let's listen for a while. Now this is not for a bunch of smart in it. See, you know everything already. You're dismissed now. I mean, you can go out there and twiddle your thumb and sit on the concrete walk or something. See, this is not for you. This is for people that want to grow in grace. I want a challenge, don't you? That's the reason I don't like to take a warm bath. That's no challenge. I never, I never, if I take a warm bath, it'll be at night. But I never, I never take a warm bath in the morning unless I stay under the cold shower for a while. That's a challenge to me. And my flesh doesn't like it. I said, oh, no. I said, oh, yeah. Going to have a cold bath. See, most of us, we just, we're so soft. We're flabby. Just flabby. We're just floppy and greasy. Most of us are. I mean, I don't like that. I believe God's people ought to be soldiers. And, you know, they won't even take a soldier if he's out of shape. Do you know that? If his old heart's not right, he said, no, sir, we don't want you. If his eyes are not good, no, sir, you can't come and fight for us. You've got to have everything just right. You've got to have good ears and good eyes. You've got to have a strong body. They'd never take you in the army. Now then, here's the sweet thing about the Lord. He'll take the most unfit thing on earth and put him in his army, but he'll fix him up before he does. That's right. Now, God, he, he, he doesn't have any four Fs. No, sir. I mean, he'll take every one of them. And put them in his army. And, uh, but he'll get them ready. He'll make the heart right. He'll fix the eyes where they can see right. All right. In Genesis chapter 1, 
and verse 29 and 30. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. Did you know that most of the times where meat is mentioned in the Bible, it doesn't mean cow or hog or chicken or something else. It means vegetables. I can prove that. I could go through every time it's mentioned, and I'd say most of the time, it doesn't mean grease. It means what grows. And every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I've given every green herb, every green herb for me. And it was so. There's something good about green, isn't it? There's something good about the colors. For instance, I like a colorful dinner. If I were to have vegetables, I like an English pea, that's green. I like beets, that's red, and that's the blood builder. Beets, and most people don't like beets. You're not born liking beets. See, you're born with a depraved appetite. Everybody likes the wrong thing when they come up. You've got to train yourself to eat what's right. If you only eat what you taste like and what you like to start with, you'll die a long time before you're supposed to die. You're to train your appetite. Everything about it. The Bible said train up a child. A, a child comes untrained. His appetite's untrained. He'll eat a roach, but he wouldn't eat a carrot. Isn't that right? He'll put a fly in his mouth. He'll swallow a fly. He won't eat a carrot. Now then, let's, uh, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 27. Chapter 27. This interesting chapter. 27, verse 4. And make me savory meat, such as I love. Bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Verse 7. Bring me venison. And make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. The dear old man's mixing two things, isn't he? Mixing the spiritual with the physical. And I believe we're going to get in trouble before it's all over. Turn to the 31st verse now, verse 31. And he also made savory, had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? He said, I'm thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. Wait a minute. Jacob's already been there, hadn't he? Jacob went out and he took meat. His mother fixed up meat. And he came in and deceived. The meat was deceitful because it tasted like the venison because the mother knew how to fix it. And Jacob came in and stole the blessing. And so he, he, his father was going by sight. He came in by feel. He said, he couldn't see, but he said, I want, he taste and feel. He said, I want, let me feel you, son. And he felt him and he had fixed his arms with a lot of hair on them. He said, well, your voice is the voice of Jacob, but you, I, you feel like Esau. And so he got fooled. But he was mixing up two things. He was, and I think we've done that in our churches too much in our generation. We've tried to go down to church and eat before we had anything. When we got through eating, we couldn't pray. We was too full. We'd already been gluttons. I know I've been there many times. I, I, was, I was one of the chief cooks of Second Baptist Church in this city. I've made enough cream gravy to float a battleship. I guarantee you. I fried rabbits. We've had buck dinners and fish. And we've had, I want you to know, I was known for the cream gravy making. The word gravy comes from the word graveyard. You know that. All right, turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Chapter 20. Easy to remember. Verse 20. 20 and verse 20. Only the trees which thou knowest, that they be not trees for meat, thou shalt destroy and cut them down. And thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee until it be subdued. That's reasonable, isn't it? Isn't that sensible? He said now, you go out there, and if you find a tree that doesn't bear any meat, that is, if it doesn't have something good to eat on it, cut it down. He said, just whack that right down. But he said, if it's, if it's good for meat, he's talking about meat. 
Well, you'd say, what do you think that means? Pecans, walnuts, hickory nuts, uh, fig trees, any kind of tree that has something good on it that you could eat. Isn't it, isn't it sad that you can go all over Corpus Christi and you can't find one tree hardly that's got a thing on it fit to eat? Did you know you can go north and uh, in the apple country and you'll find every tree in the yard except an apple tree? They could grow those big delicious uh, apples and wine sap and Jonathan apples. You think they plant apple trees up there? No. You, you think people in the strawberry country, you think they'd plant, straw, plant strawberries in the backyard? No, sir. You think people plant uh, tomatoes, beautiful tomatoes, uh, in the backyard? No, sir. You know what they plant? St. Augustine grass. Never eat it. Never juice it. You think people that plant in, in the pecan country and walnut country, you think they plant nuts? No, no. You think people that plant fig trees and fig trees want abundant Bible? You think people that plant grape uh, vines? No, sir, and have beautiful grapes. A blood builder is a grape, and the Bible talks a lot about grapes and the fruit of the vine. No, sir. But you see, we're closing in now on the health of the American people. We're dying like flies because we refuse to eat out of the soil and fix it and prepare it and rebuild it. And now then, we're going to pay the price by dying. And we're going to spend every dime we're going to make in our money-making processes on our health. A lady called me yesterday. I mentioned it last night. She said, Brother Olaf, I've had my little girl, 14 years old, in the psychiatric ward for 30 days, $50 a day. That's $1,500. Now, you know, her husband, that girl's daddy doesn't make $50 a day. He'll work a long time. He'll work probably at least two months to pay for her hospital bill for one month. And I said, uh, it's a racket. I said, only ask you one question. Is she better? said, no, she's not. And said, I just heard about your girl's home. Isn't it strange that girls and boys would come to us that have tried and, and failed on everything they've ever tried, and yet when Jesus comes along, it's victory. Their little minds get straight. Their bodies get well. Their souls get happy. I mean, isn't that a miracle? Aren't you glad to be mixed up in a work like this? I am, because this is the answer. This is the answer. Probation officer told me the other day about a little boy. He's here this morning. A little boy sitting right back there now. And uh, he said, well, Brother Olaf, do you have uh, psychiatric help available? I said, no, sir, we don't have a psychiatrist or a psychologist. He said, then I would not let you have this boy. Because, he said, this boy is going to have to be brought down by a psychiatrist. After the psychiatrist brings him down and gets him started on the way to victory, then, he said, maybe you could do him some good. In other words, your Jesus that you present, he'll have to play second fiddle to the psychiatrist. Uh-uh. But I tell you what, We've had the boy over a week now, and he's doing just fine. Looks like he's coming down all right. Needs some clothes. He told me, said, every pair of trousers I got to tore up except one. And uh, I, I believe Jesus can do the whole job. One stop. Uh, we'll do it. All right? Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 5. And our radio friends, you're listening to the Family Altar Program coming from the People's Church, and this is teaching time. Now then, America has plunged into the most pitiful, immoral state of any nation on the face of the earth. Say what you please. I believe that fasting and eating has a lot to do with your spiritual life. This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. There's nothing. You know what the Bible said? I humble my soul with fasting. There's nothing that'll humble you like fasting. There's nothing that'll bring the old body under like starving it down a little bit. And I say again, the price of health is starvation in the eyes of the world. Now, if you want to get us in trouble out here, you let the girls... Uh, give out some rumors about what we eat and what we don't eat. 
And, and they think immediately we're a bunch of nuts. And yet we love nuts. They're a good meat substitute. <laughs> but they're not as greasy. I'm not against the right kind of meat, but it's getting difficult. For instance, I walked into a store and one of our uh, honeybee quartet was with me, I believe, the other day in a, a certain state, and we saw uh, barbecued, barbecued sausage, $1.75 a pound. $1.79 a pound. You think of that. One seventy-nine a pound. And nobody thinks about anybody buying it. I mean, they just go in and said, I'd like about three pounds of that, please. That's a wad of money, nearly six dollars. But I go on by the fruit counter and I saw the grapes were 79 cents a pound because they were just in. And somebody said, you wouldn't buy those, would you? For 79 cents a pound. I said, I suppose I would. I've got a lot more than 79 cents and you got a dollar and 79 cents. Not near as greasy. This is Bible food and that's the thing God said is unclean. Why don't we go by the Bible? If it worked out, fine. Why does the doctor say when you have first heart attack, no hog meat, please, no coffee, please, Why? no cigarettes anymore. You had your first heart. Why wait till your heart breaks down on you before you get into discipline stuck into you? Doesn't make any difference what you eat, just so it keeps you well. Let me ask you this. Do you believe it's wrong to commit suicide? What would the world think of me if they read the paper in the morning and said, Evangelist Zester Roloff killed himself last night. He took a gun and shot himself. Cut his wrist or cut his throat. Jumped off the top of his building over there and killed himself. What did they think about him? I know what they'd begin to say. Half of the town would say, you know, I always thought there's something strange about that guy. I knew he's some sort of a nut and he finally lost the rest of his marbles and killed himself. Mm -hmm. Now then, what do you suppose I ought to be doing up here in the pulpit today? Suppose I say to you, if you eat the wrong thing, you're committing suicide. But the world doesn't mind it as long as you do it gradually. And you can go out here and commit suicide by eating and drinking and taking liquor and dope and eating grease and a bunch of junk, and uh, they'll just think you're a real guy. Strange, isn't it, how dumb the world is? But that's suicide. I may just commit, and I'm sure that I've committed at least five or ten years of suicide, probably twenty. I imagine I've killed twenty years of my life because of a lack of discipline and ignorance and mainly ignorance. Nobody ever told me. I'm pretty sure my mother died at least 10 or 15 years before she was supposed to because nobody told her. I got to her just too late because I'd just started out. And uh, she went through a healing crisis and it scared her to death and scared everybody around her. And I sent a little lady that taught me up there to help her. And, and a lot of times when you start cleansing your system, I'll tell you, you get sicker than you ever was before. And you take that as a sign, this thing's killing me. No, it's curing me. Now, the doctor can do anything and get by with it. In fact, he can bury all his mistakes, and everybody said the operation was a success. The patient just died. And you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And you're not going to get your system clean and go through a real cleansing process without having some repercussions, and that's what scares people. There's a lot of dust and dirt that you stir up in a house when you start spring house cleaning. And it allowed to give you asthma, and I don't know, it allowed to give you other stuff, but let me tell you something. The same thing happens when you go start to cleanse your system. Now, it wouldn't if you had been doing that regularly. Everybody ought to go through a cleansing process at least four times a year. That's once every three months. A car has to have it. The engine has to have it. L.M. Dyson's back there, and he's the big diesel man and the boat man. But I'll guarantee he knows the secret of his big old boats that go out there 
uh, that has made here in Beverly a little. He knows clean motors and clean engines. Brother, he's got filters and he's got the best oil and he's got everything. And he watches those engines and uh, run log books. And old Dave back there, my mechanic, on that 411 and 206, I'll guarantee he's got log books. He enters every time he changes the oil and you're just supposed to go so long and there it is and he tunes this up and he changes the plugs. Why don't we do something like that for these poor old bodies? But we just let them run and run till they rattle until finally uh, they begin to come apart. And then we run to the doctor and said, could you give me a right quick cure? I don't think so. It took you 40 years to get like that. Now you want to get well with a little hypodermic, don't you? It'll never be. You've heard me say, and I said again, the most miraculous thing about the miracle drugs is that you can take them and still live. I'm talking to you, if we go back to the natural living, I mean, and let the Bible be our guide. God knew about us. He made us. You know where, you know where the, uh, the manuals come from? With the Chevrolet or with the Cessna or with the Piper airplane? You know where those come from? They come from the factory that put them out. Amen? All right. Now then, do you know where the manual comes from for your body? It comes from the one who made it, the Word of God. And why in the world haven't you got sense enough to go by instead of swelling up and pouting and pulling back and dying before your time? But that's exactly what you're going to do because most of you are not humble enough to pay any attention. I mean, we'd just rather die. Just like a man said, well, I'd rather smoke and die early. Well, he will. But that's his business. But I tell you one thing, I'm obligated to teach this younger generation something about staying well. Now, the just shall live by faith. You'd say, well, if you live by faith, why don't you just go ahead and eat anything you want to and pray over it? And the Lord, no, that's not living by faith. That's living by foolishness. There's a lot of, lot of difference between faith and foolishness. Did you know that? Now, God knows you have to have some groceries. You have to have some food. The body has to have food. But man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. But these bodies need to be fed. Now, what should we eat? What should we eat? The Bible said we ought to eat that which God gives, and we ought to eat the way he gives. Thank you for joining us today on the Family Altar Program with Lester Roloff. You may listen to the preaching and the special music of the Family Altar Program 24 hours a day when you visit our ministry website, rolloff.org. We love hearing from our listeners. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please write to us at Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 85536. Again, that's Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 85536. This broadcast is made possible by the prayers and financial support of listeners like you. Thank you for partnering with us, and remember that Christ is the answer.